Hi Internet, it's Vita Day 21 and today we're talking about what makes us feel most insecure, whether or not we want to change it or accept it, so on and so forth. And what I'm going to talk about today, the thing that makes me feel most insecure is my weight, uh, my body image, my perception of my size, so on and so forth. Um, body image, self-esteem, and weight have been something that I've struggled with my entire life. Um, when we showed those pictures of when we were younger, I did mention that I was round in sixth grade in that big blue poncho. Um, and to my recollection, my issues with my weight and my size did start in elementary school. When I was in elementary school, I was known as a girl who was always wearing um, big baggy sweaters. Keep in mind, I'm from San Diego, California, Southern California. It doesn't get cold here. Our idea of cold is like 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not really cold at all. Um, so when it gets hot in summer, I would be wearing sweaters because I was just so ashamed and embarrassed of my size. When I moved on to middle school and high school, that's when I started my disordered eating patterns. And even though I'm not diagnosed, um, I have read the DSM, and I should be diagnosed with um, the non-purging type of bulimia. Um, I guess not a lot of people know this, but there are two types of bulimia. One is purging type. I guess the more widely known version of bulimia, and that's when uh, people will binge and then purge either by throwing up or diuretics or other, there are other ways to purge, get kind of gross enemas or whatever. Um, so that's one type. The other type is the non-purging type and this is when people binge and then they uh, either fast or participate in excessive exercise, that sort of thing. And I was the fasting sort of the non-purging bulimics. So that is what I would be diagnosed with had I ever sought out a diagnosis, but I never have. Um, and it's, I don't know why I never have. I probably should at some point. I don't know. I guess because I know and I've been better about about my body image and self-esteem in recent years that I, I just don't feel like I need to get diagnosed at this point. If it gets worse again, then I will certainly seek out treatment. But um, right now, I feel like I'm in a good place as far as loving myself and being good to myself and eating regularly and not fasting. But anyways, in high school, that's when uh, my fasting started. I was of a normal body weight. So it wasn't like you could look at me and say, oh yeah, she has an eating disorder or something like that. I was totally a normal size, thinner than I am now. Um, I am currently overweight. I'm not afraid to say it, whatever. Um, but in high school, I was much thinner. And I would go for days without eating. And people noticed. Um, maybe not in the way that I, I would have liked for them to notice to help me. Um, I, I think people attributed my not eating to me being really shy. So I think it was a social thing to people. They just thought, oh, you only eat in front of people you're really comfortable with. And they thought that because that's what I told them. And I would lie straight up to people about why I wouldn't eat. Or I would tell them, oh, I ate somewhere else or I'm going to eat later. And I could go for days without eating because people never questioned it. I mean, we were teenagers. We're all self-absorbed. <laughs> so um, maybe they didn't really second guess what I was saying or maybe they didn't know how to deal with it. I don't know why no one ever called me out on my, my not eating. But I did have a reputation from high school all the way up until grad school as being the girl who didn't eat in front of people unless she was extremely comfortable. Again, they thought it was a social social anxiety sort of thing, but it wasn't. It was that I was so afraid that people would take note of how much I was eating or how I was eating um, and, and judge me 
and be like, oh, she looks that way or she's that size because of the way she eats or what she eats. I, that's just where my mind went. And so I wouldn't eat in front of people and um, I wouldn't eat for long periods of time so I could maintain a, a normal weight so I could just look normal or what I thought was normal. Um, at some point in, in my early 20s, I decided I couldn't keep doing it. Um, it was just, I realized, you know what, this is not healthy, it's terrible, I'm treating my body poorly, I clearly have some self-esteem issues that I need to deal with, and so um, throughout grad school I've just been finding, I had just been finding ways to, to learn to love myself more and treat myself better, um, and pay more attention to nutrition and exercise, in a healthy way and um, I worked on just changing the way I thought about how I looked and what I ate and the number on the scale and it's it's a struggle every single day it's still a struggle and um, I feel like I'll be in recovery for a very long time because those poor habits of fasting and starvation are so ingrained into me like, there are absolutely days, many days, where I think I could lose a lot of weight if I just didn't eat for a while, or if I just skipped this meal, or something like that, something not cool like that. Um, it, I have gotten better, and I can definitely say from personal experience, if anyone out there is struggling with this, or having a hard time with their body image, that it is possible to learn to love yourself, it's a process, and it's a struggle, it's a challenge, and I work towards it every second, of every single day, but it's possible. I definitely love myself more now than I ever have. Um, I definitely treat myself better now than I ever have, but it is work every single day. Um, yeah. That's that's my biggest insecurity, and it's probably going to continue to be my biggest insecurity for a long time. Hopefully not too long. Hopefully um, soon I will be able to call myself fully recovered. I don't know if, if that's a possibility at this point, because I'm still just a few years into recovering from something that's been a part of me for most of my life, if not all of my life. Um, yeah. So that's my deep dark secret. It is quite deep and dark. Maybe three or four people, four of my friends in real life know about this. I have talked about it before. It's not something I feel ashamed of. Um, it's just that I'm not sure a lot of people know how to deal with it. I'm not sure that a lot of people know how to have conversations about it without making uh, or without feeling uncomfortable. And I'm not trying to push discomfort on anyone um but I have I have talked about it um in presentation settings I used to intern at a middle school and I had the opportunity to give a presentation to a group of sixth grade girls on any topic that I wanted and I picked body image and self-esteem and I talked about bulimia I talked about anorexia I talked about media pressure to look a certain way or be a certain way um and I tried to to just let those girls know, you know what, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And I don't think we hear that enough, that you don't have to look a certain way to be beautiful. You don't have to be a certain weight or certain size to be beautiful. You can be beautiful by being beautiful, um, by being kind and being generous and being being yourself <laughs> and that is not something that I knew growing up and that's something that I've had to learn as an adult so that was knowledge I wanted to give to those girls at an earlier age than I got it um, so yeah now it's almost nine o'clock and I haven't eaten dinner yet because I was at work late and and talking about my eating disorder. So I'm going to go eat dinner. Um, thank you for anyone who listened this far. 
Um, if anyone ever wants to talk about it or is struggling with something similar or just wants to chat about something that they're struggling with, um, let me know. <laughs> I'm more than happy to share my story um, and I would love to hear other people's stories and help in any way that I can, if I can. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to go eat. My stomach was growling through this video. You might have heard it. Sorry. Again, thank you if you listened. Um, have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, whatever you're experiencing at this moment. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys are beautiful. I love your faces. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.